Greetings, everyone. That's what happens when you click the clicker twice instead of once. I hope everyone got a rose. Because after we sing our congregational song, which is Swing Wide the Doors, I'm going to ask you to simply walk around the room, make eye contact with someone, and exchange roses. And then go to another person and exchange roses. So make sure you have your rose handy. And if you don't have one, the ushers will find you one during the song, okay? All right, so let's swing wide the doors. Find somebody Just to give one find to. somebody to give a rose to. Okay. And then if you want to, do it again. I'll go give one to Chris. Hey, there's one for you. Thank you very much. I'll trade with you. Thank you very much. Do it again? Okay. Okay. No, no, no. You ain't getting it. You missed the prelude. sit down. Okay. All right, grab a seat. Okay. Okay. I think that we should understand one of the rules that's very rarely ever written down at Centers for Spiritual Living. If you hug more than three minutes, you're engaged. <laughs> so, so. So just enjoy yourself and know that. We do have some prelude to this that we're going to have pop up right now.
All right. Now, you can welcome Judy up to do the announcements. <laughs> How is everyone this evening? Great, great, great. We just have a few announcements. Coming up this Sunday is the Visioning Workshop. It is free. It have, oh, first Sunday in July. That's right. Okay. The first Sunday in July, which is a week from Sunday, is the Visioning Workshop. It is free. Uh, there is two classes that you can still sign up for. One is the Essential Ernest Holmes. It started on June the 16th, but evidently you can still attend because it's on the announcement sheet that you can. And then coming up in July is Meditation is More Than You Think. It's a great class. I've had it before. It has a variety of ways to meditate. And so sometimes you will realize, oh, I was meditating when I was doing that, which is true. Membership orientation classes are starting on Sundays, July 31st, August 7th, and the 14th. So if you want to know more about the center or our contemplating membership, this is an excellent class to take so that you get more information and can make an informed decision as to whether or not you want to become a member or not. Next Wednesday is Jeff Ryan. I started to call him Mazagatani because he just changed his name about a little over a year ago. Jeff Ryan. And he is talking about some scripture from Leviticus. However, it's not just from Leviticus in the Bible. It's also in some important and significant documents that are in our Constitution, in, inscribed on different monuments in our capital. Yes, it does deal with freedom from discord, which is what we've been looking at that idea all month. Now, Click it, please. Oh, so something else. Happened. Okay. Our invocation is being done by our, one of our practitioners to be, Jamie Jetty. Please join me in taking that deep breath and releasing all that wonderful fellowship, the drive here. And right here, right now, I invite you to allow yourself this space of joy and peace and opening your heart and allowing that in your mind, one mind, to receive all this good that is gifted to us this evening. And as this evening unfolds with Judy, Bob, Justin, Reverend Doug, and all of you, know that you are one with all. Perfect expressions of God, one. And know that the gift that is right inside your heart replaces the discord that is no longer necessary. And please affirm this, this moment and this space together and join me by saying, and so, so it is. is. Wonderful. 
So, last Sunday, and we seem to be having a, an interesting case where Reverend Doug will give a talk on Sunday about a subject that's so similar and yet just a little different because as human beings we have different perceptions and ideas and concepts of that which is going on around us. Wouldn't you agree to that? The last Sunday he gave a wonderful sermon on, on this subject and I'm going to ask you to repeat it with me one more. It's one of the principles of science of mind. It goes, we believe, thank you for helping me, that the ultimate goal of life is to be freedom from all discord of every nature. And that's the goal, it's sure to be attained by all. Isn't it interesting that, uh, I don't know if it happens to you, but if Judy and I are driving across town from east to west and north to south, each of us seem to have decided which way is the best way. <laughs> and she's not afraid to convince me. <laughs> But every little thing, which, which door to go into, what to unlock, uh, it, it's a continuum, isn't it? From the time you're a little child to always uh, seeking the elimination of discord and the enhancement of peace and harmony. And we don't mind correcting each other once in a while if we need to. And we don't mind as human beings until we get over it judging other people's philosophies and their ideas and their concepts, which of course, the reasonable individual like we have in this audience knows full and well, is probably the most general cause of all discord. If we wanted to get completely away from discord, the first thing we'd probably eliminate is judgment. <laughs> Would you agree? Yes. Be a good place to start, wouldn't it? Yes. I think they uh, actually, as, as we had in the prelude, the first place that in researching for this talk that I came up with was actually love. Love is the unseen power that opens the hearts of men, but it's also the unseen power that opens my own heart. And so that would probably be, be as you saw in the prelude, the number one on the list. I'm going to use up your time for just a minute. I can't remember. That. Yeah, I'm just going to go to a black screen. And I'm going to tell you or share with you some very brief stories that not only enhanced my life, but has created a kingdom of heaven for me on this planet for most of my life, and downgraded down to my kids, and now it's working with my grandkids. The same ideas. First thing I'll mention is at 23 years old, I was hired as a produce buyer for a grocery store, a chain of grocery stores, and it was this big chesty kid's job to go down on the Los Angeles produce market and get the best prices on the produce and get the best pro pri uh, produce, and bring it back to Las Vegas so we could sell it. Those of you that are old timers, it was Loveland's Country Fair Market for those of you that are ancient Las Vegans. And they had a chain of grocery stores here in Vegas. So I was kind of a chesty young guy, and I'd walk down that market at 4 o'clock in the morning, buying tomatoes, and I'd look at them, the guy would say, there's $2.50, and I'd walk until I found another guy, buck seventy-five. Then I'd walk another guy until I found seventy, and then maybe I'd buy from the, the guy that was the cheapest. It was always my intention to be a hero. Make sense? 23-year-old guy, chest sticking out, I'll show the world who's the boss. I also, at that time, and I mentioned this time of the year because watermelons, for those of you who know, they, they, I call it pop. In the produce business, we call it popping. But watermelons become ripe and ready as soon as the, uh, the area hits 100 degrees, and not before. But the grocery stores need to put watermelons on sale on the 4th of July. So as a produce buyer, it was my hope that the watermelons would be ready by the last week in June. Make sense? So I could truck them in. And so I started chiseling on watermelons. I wanted to buy them in Blythe and Bakersfield and here and there at the same price that Safeway did. After all, I was Bobby, the buyer. One day, I called a guy up that I had bought watermelons for three times in the past, 
And he said, Bobby, he said, find somebody else to sell you your watermelons this year. I really am busy, and I don't have time to fool with you. Click. I found me some watermelons. I paid at least 10 bucks a ton more than I had in the past, but I had lost my supplier. At the same time, there was a guy named Hi, Hi Pileski that owned a produce company that I hauled for in downtown Los Angeles, and he took me to lunch one day. He was about 45 years old, very, very successful in the produce business. He took me to lunch one day because he said, Bobby, I want to share something with you, and, and you take it for what it's worth. When you're buying produce down here, you may hurt that guy today, and you may chisel him yesterday, and you may actually look like a hero when you get back to Las Vegas. But in reality, the produce is the most crude, cold-blooded business in the world. Everybody's inventory is waste matter in two or three weeks after they have it. So just remember this when you're walking those streets in the morning. The guy that needs you this week, you may need next week. And all it takes is one drought, one dry spell, and, and the big shot becomes the guy they don't need anymore, and you ain't going to have no tomatoes. Interesting concept, isn't it? Well, I was lucky. And I say lucky because I heard him. I, I got it. I got it. Especially after the guy wouldn't sell me watermelons and I ended up buying more. I knew that what he was telling me was true. And so I took that information, not only in the produce buying time, but in every other endeavor in my life. If everybody doesn't win, nobody wins. And you can be a big shot and a tough guy. And you can show the world how it is. And you can show everybody how smart you are and how educated you are and how tough you are and how tough I am, I should say, this week. But next week may be an entirely different world. So when I went into the produce business, I taught my buyer the same thing. And it seems like such a small thing, but some of the people in this room will remember when there was a copper shortage. We were in the, biz in the, in the business, and at that time, building almost seven schools at the same time, and, and copper went totally short. And, and the, the people in town that had buyers that were immature couldn't get any copper. But two years before that happened, I had walked by my own buyer's door, and I had heard her chiseling a supplier. So I reached in, and I closed the door. Her name was Shanna. I said, Shanna, and I repeated what this guy had told me. We may be the king of the mountain today, we may be able to really hurt people and let them break themselves. But the trouble is, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So I want you to call that guy back that you just hung up on after you told him his price was too high. And I want you to tell him, I happen to know because I've checked prices all over Las Vegas and all over the country, and your price is legitimate, and I want you to send me that copper that I just turned down. Two years later, when the shortage hit, guess who had copper in Las Vegas to finish the projects with? Isn't that interesting? I share this story and these stories with you because it's so easy to listen to Reverend Doug and to hear him say, one, one, one. But it's an entirely different thing to understand what he's really saying, isn't it? What he's really saying is, if everybody doesn't win, nobody wins. Wow, what a way to live a life. So next we have a singer, don't we? That's all I got to say. If, if you want any more than that, write me and I'll write you a book. <laughs> Come on up, Doug. does practice what he preaches. So you might want to close your eyes for this. Imagine singing this to yourself. In this moment, in this
this place I remember who I am letting fear and worry fall away from me I open my eyes and see there is only love there is only love love that heals love that sets me free there is only When it seems I've lost my way, when I go inside and quiet my mind, I can hear spirit gently say, there is only love, there is only You know, that was so much like a prayer, I didn't want it to be over. <laughs> One aspect of love is forgiveness. And sometimes forgiveness is one of the most difficult things to do. But it's only through forgiving that we can reach that win-win solution in all aspects of our lives. Now, forgiveness is not condoning a person's act. It's not saying it was okay for them to do that. It's not forgetting what happened. In actuality, it's for learning the lesson that that situation or those circumstances provided for you. So it's not forgetting. It's for learning. Forgiveness is for letting go of a situation, for letting go of the past. Forgiveness is for allowing those circumstances, that person, government, or situation to pass freely through your mind without an emotional reaction. Wayne Dyer has a compelling story about the power of forgiveness. My own father walked out on uh, our family when I was just a little boy. Uh, my mom had three uh, little boys by the time uh, she was only 22 years old. 
uh, all under the age of four, and he just disappeared and he left. And I grew up hating this man. I mean, I had so much anger toward him, and he married five additional women, and he died of cirrhosis of the liver. He was an alcoholic and so on. But it's interesting, uh, many years later, uh, when I kept trying to find him, I used to be so angry at him. I mean, I'd wake up every morning, and I'd be just sweating, and I'd, meet, I'd have dreams about him and fighting and him and all of him, this kind yeah. of thing. And uh, it was 1974, I found out that he had been dead 10 years and I didn't even know it. <clears throat> and through a series of the most mysterious kinds of things, I, I rented a car, I found out that he was uh, buried in Biloxi, Mississippi. And I drove down to Biloxi from Columbus, Mississippi, where I was doing a little bit of work, and uh, I arrived at the outskirts of the city, and I uh, went to find out where my father was buried. There were three cemeteries in Biloxi. The f uh, so I called the first one, there was no answer. I called the second one that was busy. The third one was this tiny little uh, listing, and I called, and this man came on after a long time, and I said, is there... My father's name was Melvin Lyle Dyer. He died uh, in uh, 1964, 10 years ago. I just came... I just wanted to find my father. He went away for the longest time, and he said, uh, yes, he said, your father's buried here. And it was like the end of a dream for me. Mm -hmm. And I went to my father's grave, and I stood there for uh, three hours. It was the 24th of August. It was 1964. And... Um, what I did in those three hours is I, I, I was angry at him, I stomped on him, I, I, I had other things I wanted to do on his grave. <laughs> um, and finally, I, the last few minutes when I was there, something came over me and uh, I said, from this moment on, I send you love and I forgive you for everything that you've done. And when I walked away from there, it was like everything in my life changed. I felt like my whole life totally turned around when I got rid of the anger and the resentment and the hatred when you carry that stuff around. It's exhausting. Yeah, there's a Chinese proverb that says if you're, if you're going to pursue revenge, you'd better, uh, you'd better build, uh, dig two graves, you know, because you're right. gonna, cause it's going to kill you. Yeah, you and so my yourself. father, the, the person who walked out on me when I was just an infant and walked out on my mother and forced my mother to put her children into uh, foster homes and so on, he was perhaps the most influential person in my life because it was through the act of forgiveness that my whole career took off. I wrote Erroneous Owns right and 14 days after that it became a worldwide bestseller and everything in my life changed. I stopped drinking, uh, I got myself back into shape, I started attracting the right people into my life. Everything changed just through the act of forgiveness. So Powerful, wasn't that? Yeah. When we found that video, we knew that's the one we had to use for tonight. So forgiveness for me is more easily accomplished when it happens in the past. It's difficult for me to forgive in a current situation, in an ongoing situation. How about for you? You find the same thing? Yeah. So what I've learned, for me, what I have to do is accept the situation as it is. Not try to change the other person, not try to change something else going on, not to try and change the government or whatever, the politicians, whatever. But to realize that that's the way it is and that's the way it's going to be. And that gives me a choice. And my choice is to either accept it as it is and keep myself centered, knowing that I'm God's beloved, that God is my source, using every mantra that I know to keep me centered. Or I can remove myself from the situation. Sometimes that's possible. Sometimes it isn't. We believe that the ultimate goal of life to be complete freedom from all discord of every nature. And that goal is sure to be attained by all. Remember my toolbox? I brought it tonight, but I lost two of the butterflies, so I left it down there. But in that toolbox is the word forgiveness. 
But also in that toolbox are lots of other tools. And if I were to leave that toolbox sitting there, or in my cupboard, in my cabinet, in the spare bedroom, wherever that toolbox happened to be left off, it's not doing me much good, is it? Last month, we talked about a tool that some of you might have done before and brought it out to use that tool again. Some of you may, may be a new tool that you added to your toolbox. And that's where we focused on one quality of God, one aspect of God, just one, for a whole month. Now, I chose joy. You would be amazed how many times joy showed up. I even found a rock that had been in my house for I have no idea how long, sitting on a shelf, guess what word was on that? Joy. Yeah. Mary Martin and I have had more conversations in the last month than I think we have in six months. And guess what? We shared the same word, joy, didn't we? And every time, that's one of the things that we talked about. We talked about other things. So how was it for you? How did you do with your word? Anybody? Come on. I, okay. Did she, love show up in your life? Could you yeah, see love? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Bob. Integrity. Beautiful. And you notice when you have a word, sometimes the opposite of it will show up just to test, just so that you can see, okay, I really want joy in my life. I really want integrity in my life. I really want love in my life. And make that conscious decision to attract it into your life. Anybody else? Was that your word for last month? My word for the day. Your word for the day. <laughs> what was yours? Personal discipline. He said that was his for the day. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope that you will either continue to focus on that word that you chose, that aspect, that quality of God that you chose, whether it was love or peace or joy or wholeness or abundance, whatever it was, and continue to focus. And some of you may say, eh, I've had enough of that word. I'm going to choose something else. Because truly, it, the whole point of that was when you saw joy, when you focused on joy, when you felt joy, it was to realize that connection with source, that connection with God. So maybe this month you might want to choose a new word or remember the old word, whichever works for you. But you do have tools. Some of them might be meditation, some might be um, walking the labyrinth, some might be any number of tools, prayer, affirmations. And these, if you don't use the tools, they're not going to do any good for you, are they? But if you get that spiritual toolbox that you have out, and you look through your tools and you find which one is going to work in this situation, and use it, I think you will find it very powerful, very helpful. Now I've got to find out where I am. I realized how important it was for me to main con maintain contact with spirit, with God, with source. Because when I get in the car, 
that's a good source of discord for me. I can notice how reckless that driver is, how foolish that driver is, how thoughtless they are, how that's an accident waiting to happen, and what happens to me? Eh. The opposite of discord. But when I remember my word joy, and I'm determined to bring joy into my life in that moment, regardless of how stupid, reckless, irresponsible, thoughtless that, <laughs> I know, that person is, then I can let go of those words. I can let go of that judgment, can't I? And I can focus on the real beauty. I can focus on the beautiful sunset. I can focus on how well the other drivers are doing. I can be grateful for the car that I'm in and I can that drive so well and swerve so quickly in one case. So that, and, the, and I can be grateful that there were no cars in the other lane when I needed to swerve quickly. So, by focusing, I reconnect. So freedom from discord is available to everyone. It's there. All we need to do is utilize those tools that we already have to bring about freedom from discord. So what if now is that time? And Reverend Doug's gonna ask that question. What if now? It is changing your mind. So I think my word for the month is gonna be now. I've spent so much time thinking about all the things I'm not Ignoring my own gifts for the things I haven't got So much pain, so many years, convinced I'm not enough You know it's tough to see the light when shadows fall I've been burdened by my history, carrying my past. It's time to let it fall away and live my life at last. What if I could say goodbye to the lies of yesterday? What if I decide to let it go? What if now? I start to be the one I'm meant to be. What if now I begin to shine my light? What if today is the day I celebrate the beauty of my song? What if now I finally let my spirit sing? Everything would find its perfect place some. What if now? The voices in my memory are heartless and unkind. I would never say to anyone the things I say in my own mind. It's time to love myself for all I am and all I'm not. I've got to find the strength to free my soul. What if now I start to be the one I'm meant to be? What if now I begin to shine my light? 
What if today is the day I celebrate the beauty of my song? What if now I finally let my spirit sing? Everything would find its perfect place somehow. What if now? What if now? Ooh, what if now? Oh, what if now? Justin. Well, I invite you to close your eyes and simply contemplate the verses of that song. What if now I begin to shine my light? What if now I become the person I was meant to be? What would that look like? What would please my heart? What is my heart longing to express? What would my first step be for me to shine my light? What must I let go of in order to shine my light? What is there for me to embrace? There within me. I know there is only one, one power, one presence, one life, one love, one source. That source of energy, of life, of love. That source of wisdom and peace and power. 
that source of abundance, of wisdom, of balance, of harmony. The wholeness of God that was at the beginning before time and space. That eternal source that exists in all of its creation. And I'm so grateful to know that I am one with this source, one with this life, one with this love, one with this power, this peace. And as I know this is true for me, I know it is true for every individual within this room, within this city, anyone watching online. It is true for everyone on this planet Earth. So I speak my word and claim this truth that the power and presence, the wholeness of God, the power of God, the love that is God, expresses through its individuals. It expresses as shining lights, as love, as peace, as abundance, as wholeness. That everything that is ever needed is perfectly complete within the individual. Whether it's abundance, the resources are within. If it's love, the resources are within. And they attract to each and every person. the right people, the right circumstances, the right opportunities, the right possibilities to express these gifts, these qualities in magnificent form. For each one is whole and complete expression of that one power, that one presence, that one life, that one love that exists within, it surrounds, it flows through, and it attracts all that is needed. The right people, the right places, the right situations, And I'm so grateful to know this truth. And in absolute gratitude, I release my word into the law. That law of God that only knows to create what it is given. And knowing that it is complete and whole in the mind of God. That every person expresses God fully and completely in magnificent ways. And knowing it is true and all is well, I simply say, and so it is. Well, we've had a great evening, and it's time for the offering. Are you coming up to join me? I am. I'm coming up to give another talk. Oh. With, oh, and I already have a speaker. I would feel remiss if I, if I didn't share one more life experience. When, years ago, when I joined this center as a member, my wife was a treasurer, but one of my best friends was the president of the board. And so I... I at that time, I was, uh, uh, and, and I want you to know that this talk I'm giving you right now is not a request 
for you to give more money or any money for that matter. My story is quickly to, to share with you what can happen. I gotta watch out. I'm tearing up, but it's not because I'm crying. It's because I had an eye infection from riding my motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> so I was having coffee with Jack Bowser one day, and, and I said, Jack, I have two difficulties in life. One of them is selling, and the other one is tithing. I, I just have a hard time with either of these things. And he said, well, I'm going to tell you my story, and, and you do whatever you want to do. He says, but when I go out in the morning, I carry two $100 bills in my back pocket in my wallet. And so when I call on somebody, I'm already feeling abundant, and uh, if that makes any sense to you. He said, when I walk by something, in a, uh, when I walk by a restaurant, I say to myself, I could afford to eat there. When I see a shirt on a, on a, on a mannequin in a department store, I say to myself, I could buy that. I don't necessarily want to buy it, I don't need it, but I could buy it. He said, that is how I give myself the feeling of oneness with life and the wholeness of this abundance thing. And he said, and I'm going to tell you another story that somebody stood on this stage, and I can tell you for sure because I was here. He was talking about tithing. And he said, if you really have difficulty tithing, if you really have a problem tipping a waitress, if you really have a problem buying a birthday present for somebody, do this. Give away a dollar and save a dollar once a month. Sounds funny, it's stupid, doesn't it? Give away a dollar and save a dollar once a month. Never think about the dollar you gave away because it was so easy. And never think about the dollar you saved because it was so easy. And then let a month go by. And then a month and month. And then a month and another month. Within about a year or six months, you'll be giving away $5 and saving $5. Then it'll be 10, then it'll be 20, then it'll be 50. Within five years after that, oh, it was, it was yeah, five, I'd say five years at the most, at the most, I had 12 trucks, receivables of $45,000. I owned everything in my shop. Isn't it interesting? from and sitting in this to... front row, from sitting in this front row, wishing that I could figure out how to make things work, to, to uh, uh, isn't that an interesting story? I thought, because we're on time, I, and I thought I'd just share that with you. Just a, a penny, penny. So, as long as it doesn't hurt, give it. Isn't that amazing? Don't ever let a waiter or a waitress, uh, uh, even if, even if I, uh, Nobody is going to do business with Bobby Williams and lose. Nobody. It just ain't going to happen. Thanks for allowing me to share this. <laughs> I don't think I could have done a better job in saying it works if you try it, if you use it, if you do it. Tithing is in that spiritual toolbox. And there are ways that you can give and save and still feel abundant. I know it's true because I do it and it's had amazing results that I could not ever begin to explain. It's worth it. So I invite you to, if you are giving anything tonight, and I realize that some of you give on Sunday and some of you give once a month and some of you auto-tithe, but if you are giving tonight, you can get your offering ready. And together, all of us will say, you can put your hand up to your heart if you, or your connection card up to your heart if you give in some other way. And so we can say together our affirmation. Divine love in and through me blesses this offering I gratefully give. My abundance goes forth to bless and prosper all that it touches. 
And the secret is it returns. Okay, go ahead. the prosperity acceptors who were here tonight handing out the roses and, accept, and accepting our donations. I also want to thank those who brought food for the buck bowl and a blessing. I didn't tonight. I feel remiss, but I'm glad somebody else did. <laughs> it's always nice to have a spread and a choice of, of food to have. I know, they're awesome, aren't they? Yeah. And Bobby said the beautiful people that do all the work. I, I want to say that if we have practitioners available, so if you are in the mood for prayer, oh, the bookstore is also open, so if you would like prayer, go to the, to the prayer room first and then to the bookstore. Otherwise, hang out in the patio and have a good time. Let's stand and sing. I'm stepping out into a world of possibility. I'm stepping out into a whole new way to live. There's so much waiting for me. The path is clear before me. I've got so much that I have yet to give. I'm stepping out and I'm committing to integrity. I'm stepping out, releasing every fear and doubt. The road just keeps on turning. At every turn I'm learning. I'm learning what this life is all about. a world of possibility. I'm stepping out into a whole new way to live. There's so much waiting for me. The path is clear before me. I've got so much that I have yet to give. I'm stepping out and I'm committing to integrity. Stepping out, releasing every fear and doubt. The road just keeps on turning. At every turn I'm learning. I'm learning what this life is all about. I'm stepping out. I'm stepping out. I'm walking, I'm walking with the spirit, and I'm talking, I'm talking to the spirit. I'm learning, I'm learning from the spirit, and I'm turning, I'm turning to the spirit. I'm growing, I'm growing in the spirit.